I'm Lester Myers and I've been uh, collecting cactus for over 70 years now and uh, I've had them for so long that I feel they've become part of my family. From the babies, which you have to baby all along for the first few years, to the big old monsters that tend to look after themselves, it's been a great satisfaction. The thornier the plants, the lovelier they are. Arana Cactus World is situated in the town of Gilgandra in central western New South Wales. I probably have around about a thousand varieties. The diversification of the plants is probably one of the greatest attractions. Well, my interest in cactus began when I was eight or nine years old. I was actually working before school of delivering milk around town. When I came across some beautiful cactus, a couple of ladies around town who had them, they were very keen to pass a few pieces on to me because I was interested in growing them. They appealed to me, the thorns appealed to me immensely. So this is Melocactus Broadwayi. It's a tropical cactus from Central America. Other than their cousins, the uh, disco cactus, they're the only ones that develop the terminal surveillance on top. Once the plant reaches maturity, the, the surveillance starts to grow and this part stops. And you get growth rings every year, which will tell you how far it's grown. This is Ferrocactus stains eye variety Pringley. It's approximately 50 years of age. It's a beautiful plant, beautiful coloured spines. Flowers are apricot coloured. And its fruit are sweet, has a beautiful aroma. The early botanists who came across these plants, I guess they thought they were ferocious. That's why they call them a ferrocactus, really. And they are ferocious too, because some of the spines, like these are straight spined ones, but you get the, the very hook spine plants and they just rip your skin to shreds, really. These spines are like needles. They just go straight in. They do tend to uh, make you keep your mind on the job, what you're doing. I'm bleeding here from just doing these few things here. They have no respect for the human body whatsoever. This is the plant Echinocereus Rickenbacki. It has lovely big purpley pink flowers, probably about five centimetres across. This plant also has pectinate spines, which means most of the spines face in towards the body of the plant, so you can actually pick it up without getting spiked. So this is the plant Echinocactus grissoni, or mother-in-law's cushion. Flowers profusely, self-pollinating, so no shortage of seed once it starts to flower. These ones up while I'm here. To maintain the seed bank, of course, these days, and to save me money, I generally have a pair of everything so we can cross-pollinate and, and get my own seed. So this is the, the layer of seed pods that has been sitting there now for about 15 months on the plant, waiting to mature and be removed. Probably about a, a thousand seeds in this seed pod. Now you have to spread them all out, of course, and let them dry in the sun. We're going to spread the seed on top of the soil just light, lightly sprinkle them. Within reason, the closer the better, because they do like company. Lightly press it into the soil. Now I'm going to sprinkle a very light layer of sand on top of these seeds. Germination temperature is around about 25 degrees. Once this is all done, you can either covering of plastic or a sheet of glass over the top. And then once the seed starts to germinate, you can lift one corner of the glass to let some fresh air in. When I first come across cactus, what caught my eye was this, the shape of the plant, it, its symmetry, the spiralling effect that the plants have, and of course, eventually the flowering, which is out of this world, really. So this time of the year in the garden, there aren't many flowers out. So I'm just going to show you some of the beautiful flowers. This plant, which is called Boliviceria semipatanus, obviously from Bolivia, magnificent uh, bright red flowers and masses and masses and masses of them. 
another one here, which is the Helianto Sirius grandiflorus, the yellow flowered variety. Golden coloured flower with scalloped edges about 10 to 12 centimetres across when they're flowering. Well, it is an addiction, I suppose, really. You, you, you get hooked. You sort of cry when they cry, I think, sometimes, especially when you lose your babies. They can die overnight and things like this, and, the, you know, you feel you've lost part of the family. These caps I leave on all uh, winter to save the heads from coal burn in wintertime. If the coal burn attacks the head, it kills the growing head. If you kill the growing head, you, they don't flower. A hobby is an ongoing thing. It's, it's not something that you get to a stage where you think, oh, well, that'll do. People say to you, I'm getting to my age, they think, oh, well, it's time to stop. But why stop? Thank you.